Special thanks to CarParkKings.com for their proud sponsorship of In the Fast Lane. You can find out more about their great products by visiting www.CarParkKings.com. And don't forget, during checkout, type in In the Fast Lane 5 for a 5% discount on your entire order. Hey guys, In the Fast Lane here. In this video, we're going to be changing the drum brakes on a 2000 Mitsubishi Mirage. So the first thing, we're just going to take the lug nuts off on this particular model. It's a 13th, 16th socket. And it's going to be a six point. All right, so you could either put two 12 millimeter bolts in this hole and this hole and tighten it and it'll push the drum out. Or you can just tap it with a hammer lightly until it loosens up and then pull it out. We're going to give it a quick little tap and see if it breaks up first. So obviously it's on there pretty good, so we might have to get the two 12s in there and have it press it out. And there it goes. You can see how it just pulled the drum out. Step one, he's gonna put a screwdriver underneath this spring up top right here and pry it out. So watch your eyes, wear some glasses. All right, there it is, the spring. That's the first spring remove. Now the next one, we're going to take off these little, there's a spring under here, it's kind of like a washer and spring. So he's going to get a pair of pliers and he's just going to turn the washer. Hold on the washer, the pin behind There's a pin in the back, yep. He's going to turn it and now that he turned it, it comes out. There's a little negative sign. And then he can push the pin out the back and take it out. And he's doing the same thing to the other side, there's another pin. He's just turning the washer until the spring lets go. Next, he's going to pry the two shoes apart. But uh, a lot of people will take that bottom spring off. Just leave that bottom spring on. No need to take that off right now. And you want to pull it away from that little fork right there. And now he's going to take this spring out right here. There's just another spring behind one spring it. spring in the back. He's just getting some pliers and he's going to push it forward. And that's it for that. Now that your shoes have come apart, he's just taking that last spring that was on the bottom over here. And it's still hanging on to the brake cable. Mm -hmm. So he's going to disconnect it right here. And there's like a little C-clip right here. To get the C-clip, he's just going to get some pliers, put it on one end and pull it until it pushes the clip out. We went ahead and took the brake shoes off, but this job we didn't have to do it. The brake shoes were in excellent shape, actually. And uh, for the sake of you guys, we're going to go ahead and replace the wheel cylinder. Now, in order to do this, just on the back here, as you can see, there's going to be two 10 millimeters right here and here. And then you got another, it looks like a 10 on the line. So you're going to take that off and pull it out and then this whole unit will come out. But I suggest just taking off the brake line first and then the two tens. So right now I'm taking off the brake line and just loosen that up until it comes completely off. Now we're just gonna take off the two tens right here. That one and the other side. All right, we got it all loose. Now he's gonna go ahead and pull the brake line and we got a little pan underneath here to catch this uh, brake fluid. We'll go ahead. There we go. See it's coming down and we got it right in the pan. Alright, so this is what it looks like when you pull it out. You got a little port in the back where the brake line goes in. And that's the little bleeder right there that we'll be using later to get the air out of the system. There's the new wheel cylinder. And just take the plug out. And now it's ready to just be put right in there. So as you can see, it's pretty much you can't mess it up. And that's it. Now you're just going to put the two 10 millimeter bolts right in the back to bolt it up to the housing, uh, the shield, the brake shield. So after you've snugged those two up, you're just going to snug up the brake line and that's pretty much it. Now he's just going to spray a little brake cleaner on here just to clean up some of the brake fluid. We don't want any of that getting on the new shoes. 
and we'll spray it around here a little bit and that should be good okay I'm gonna explain this as easy as possible you're gonna have two pieces it looks like this when it's on the uh, brake hub and we're gonna flip the left side over and we want the skinny one then we're gonna take the e-brake arm the control arm and we're gonna set it on like that we have the washer and the C-clamp and we're gonna pop that on then that's done for that side and we'll flip it over and then it'll be able to go back up into the uh, hub so right now we're gonna put the C-clip on a little pair of pliers and just like that and you want to bend the tip just pinch it in so it doesn't come back off step one we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, e-brake arm on You're just gonna slide it on top and then he's gonna flip it around just like that and he's putting this piece into the slot on the wheel cylinder so you can see the the pin right here right there and you just slide it forward right through the brake shoe and now he's gonna take the spring and washer and he's just gonna set it on there and he's gonna hold his finger on the back over here and then push the spring down and turn it now you gotta do this with a pair of pliers and give it a turn and that's it now we're gonna take the other shoe put the spring on it just like that we're gonna lift it up now he's putting the spring on and he's just gonna loop it right there and then on the other side he's gonna stretch it it's got to go on the back side so I'll show you once once he gets that spring on there I'll show you where it is on the left side where the e-brake arm is you're gonna put the back spring right here on this first one then on the other side where there's no e-brake arm it's gonna go all the way to the far back one so it goes behind it now we're gonna pull it back and stretch it now we're gonna put the adjustment arm in there and watch how this goes in because it's crucial you get this right you gotta have one of the teeth sticking out because we still gotta put the other lever in there so it goes in just like that and then on the back here just like that so you get the big part sticking out and then where the e-brake control arm is you have one little tooth sticking out this is adjustment and then they're both in the wheel cylinders just like we did on the left side we're gonna do the same thing over here where we're gonna shove the little pin through and then we'll put the spring and pretty much retainer or washer over the top with a pair of pliers and twist it lock it now we're gonna put the lock adjuster on it's this piece right here and we're gonna slide it into the little tooth right here and then we gotta set it over this piece right here it's gotta slide in it's a little tight fit and you get a little flathead screwdriver and kind of pry it in there and it should lock in now we're gonna put the spring on there and he's gonna stretch it over to the hole right there all the way in the far corner where the other springs clipped in try to stretch it way over there here's how it all looks we got the clip in spring here and you have to push here and hold this part down because it doesn't want to go all the way in on these new pads and then here and everything else so this is how it looks Next, we gotta just adjust it once we put the uh, drum on. So now we'll just spray a little brake cleaner on here and then we'll fit it on here, put it on, see how it feels, and then we'll get a pair of uh, flat head and keep ticking down on it and it'll adjust it, the pads to where we uh, want them to be. Now make sure you have uh, .3 brake fluid in hand. I suggest getting the big bottle in case you run out. And you're gonna take the boot out. There's a boot right here, this comes out of the reservoir and fill it up to the top and once it's full to the top then uh, crack those valves and just crack it until it's a steady stream and then tighten them up and that's it pump your brakes and make sure you got good brake pressure pretty much all you do now is uh, just crack this bleeder valve right here it's dripping it's on the back it uh, looks like a eight millimeter just back it up 
and uh, just let it drip down in the pan. Do that to that one and the other one. For the last part, you just got to get your flathead in there and adjust it, move it up or down depending on where you need it. After you adjust it, you're going to put the hub back on and see how it fits. And you want it to have just a little bit of uh, friction. Water. Yeah. Just, a, just a little bit of rubbing. If you don't have any rubbing at all, it needs to be adjusted more. Now he's putting it on there. And once he gets it on there, he's going to feel how it... There's just a little bit of rub. Yeah. Yep. You can hear the rub right there just a little bit, and that's what you want. Eventually, once you pull the e-brake or hit the brakes, uh, you'll lose that rub.